Blessings to you, friends, brothers and sisters. Today's devotional is from Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows, and their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a godly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel in the night. Also, my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure, for you do not give me up to shale or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. This Psalm of David clearly reflects, well, a Psalm of praise and the recognition from David that um, his life, his very life, is dependent on the goodness of God, and you can sense in this a significant amount, like a fullness of his trust in the promises of God and the blessings of God. And I love the verse that says, um, where is it, that uh, verse 2, I have no good apart from you, and then contrasting that with verse 4, where he says, those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. And how true is that for us as well when we seek refuge, when we seek uh, a foundation in the things of this world, we're always going to be left empty-handed. We're always going to be left feeling a sense or a lack of fulfillment because the things of this world just cannot fill that space in our heart that belongs to God. It is only when we seek after His will and trust in Him as our foundation, as foundational in our lives, that we will experience the fullness of joy, showing me the path of life, as it says in the final verse, verse 11. God does direct <clears throat> our paths, and it's not always in our minds. Uh, as the psalmist says, it's, it comes from our heart, that God speaks to our heart. And how often have you in your life, I know what's happened in mine, where my brain's telling me one thing, but my heart is telling me something different. Because it is where the heart, uh, it, where our heart is, that's where God resides in us. And it's not always a conscious thought. It can sometimes just be that feeling of knowing uh, that uh, God's leading us in a particular way. It may not always be the easiest way or uh, the quickest way to what we want, but it will always be the best way. For we can always trust in God's faithfulness. He does not ever wish to do us harm. So we go throughout our days making decisions uh, based on the way the world pulls at our heartstrings, uh, contrasted with and in conflict with the way that God pulls at our heartstrings. And how can we then discern the difference between the two or, or more often than not make the, the right choice to follow the path that God has laid out before us? And that comes from building our relationship with God. It comes from studying and reading his word and praying and all those things you hear pastors talk about uh, to encourage you to to make your faith more active, make it uh, more complete in your life, make it more uh, functional in your life so that you have the mind and the heart of Christ living your life so that others may see the goodness of God as well. And that's really super simple, uh, but it is not an easy thing because uh, because of the sin that is a part of our lives. A sin is a part of who we are uh, that is always going to be in conflict with what God is or how God is leading us. But So how will you direct your life today? How have you directed your life today and in the days to come? Is it going to be based on a foundation of the way that God is speaking to your heart? Or is it going to be in pursuit of the worldly goods and the worldly riches that are so tempting to us and uh, out there for us to chase after to give us what we think is the quick fix or the best way to live our lives. We have a choice, friends.
And as David has written in this psalm, um, the choice is clear as to how we should make that choice if we truly want to live a life that has a fullness of joy. Let me offer this prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness, for your trustworthiness, for your steadfastness. God, for always leading us down the right path, that we don't always choose it. Help us to be wise in our discernment of, of the path that you have laid out before us, God, and help us to resist the temptations of the things of this world that we may find in you and in this life the fullness of the joy that you promise. In Jesus' name, amen. We will see you tomorrow for Psalm 17. Blessings to you all.